I love drawing, but not this or this. Now these are things that we expect to happen, but there are other hidden realities of realistic drawing that can really drain the joy out of drawing if you aren't prepared for them. So here are seven harsh realities of realistic drawing that you need to know. So these drawings here probably took me a couple of hours to maybe five hours to draw. And this one would have taken easily 20 hours to do. You can expect to spend many hours working on a drawing. You can't do a realistic drawing in 10 minutes or even half an hour. If you're doing a drawing like this where it's got color and it's got lots of detail and it's a big drawing, it's gonna take you many hours, especially if you're using color pencil. And this is something that you've just just got to realize and accept because you don't want to be working on a drawing and expect to get it all done in one drawing session and so you rush through the process and you rush through parts of your drawing. You need longer to create an accurate sketch, do all of the shading and add all of those details. It can be deflating to spend hours on a drawing only to show it to someone and them going, oh, that's a realistic drawing, that's not real art. I've heard the argument a lot of what is the point of realistic drawing when you can just take a photo? And maybe you've heard this too. A harsh reality of realistic drawing is that not everyone is going to appreciate the work that you do. There will be people that will try to tell you that this art style isn't real art, that there's no point to it, and it's just just copying a photo. But that doesn't mean that it's necessarily true or right. I definitely think there's meaning to realistic drawing and that it can be better than a photograph. A few years ago, I did a drawing for my husband's parents of his family dog. And it's a drawing that they've had hanging in their house for years. But recently, Lottie passed away. And that drawing has become something that's even more meaningful to them as a memory, something that's more special than all of the other photographs that they have. So I definitely think that there's a place for realistic drawings. Just be aware that not everyone's gonna like what you do and it's not everyone's cup of tea and that's okay. There's a lot of skills that you need to get good at and fundamentals that you need to understand to be able to create a realistic looking drawing. You need to understand things like proportions, values, how to create depth in your drawing and how to simulate different textures. With realistic drawing, it can be more frustrating because there's this higher level of skill to be able to create a realistic drawing. So when you're starting out as a beginner, your drawings won't look as good, you'll make more mistakes and it will be harder to get the result that you're looking for and it's one of those things that with other styles you might be able to have more fun at the start as a beginner just relaxing having fun creating artwork but when you're trying to do a realistic drawing it's pretty obvious whether it's turning out realistic or not and if it's not turning out how you want it to at the beginning it can be hard to stick with the style long enough to the point where you actually build up that experience and get good at it. If you're not sure what some of these things are and you are struggling to make your drawings look more realistic, then I have got a free class that you can check out that will help you create more realistic drawings. I go through some mistakes to avoid. I go through the basics of all of the fundamentals of realistic drawings. And I've even included a checklist that has reminders of things to think about whilst you're doing your drawing that will make it more realistic. So I'll leave a link to that at the top of the description. One thing to know is that when you're doing realistic drawing, it's a bit less of an expressive creative outlet because of the fact that you need to stick a lot closer to your reference or stick within the sort of laws of realism. Here are two artworks that I have done. This one in a very realistic style with colored pencils. And then this one is also realistic with her face. But then I did something different with the hair. This one was done in watercolors. I felt really creative when I was doing it. I could make creative decisions with the hair, how I wanted it to be. And this is something that I could do with this style. And so if you do want to use art as more of a creative outlet and you want to be more expressive with it, then maybe realistic drawing isn't for you. Or you could do what I did here and sort of marry two different styles together. But if you are looking to create a drawing that's more photorealistic, then you have got to accept 
hopes that it won't be as much of an expressive creative outlet. You have got more rules that you've got to stick to. That doesn't mean you can't be creative in how you go about creating the different textures or mixing the different colors because there's multiple ways you could get realistic results. But the outcome is always going to be realistic and very similar. But I recommend experimenting with different styles to see which you prefer and how you can incorporate multiple different styles together. Another reality of realistic drawing is that this is not a forgiving medium. If you want to draw in a realistic style, you've got to get used to spending that extra time making sure everything is accurate. Your attention to detail has got to be really, really good. You've got to spend a lot of time being focused on those little details details and looking for the little things. You have got to spend a lot of time making your sketch super accurate and getting in all of those little details. And this can be frustrating. You can get frustrated at yourself. It is going to test you. And it is such a challenging style because if you're trying to draw a portrait and you're doing the sketch, any little thing that you do off, if you do an eye a little bit too big or a little bit too wide, then it is going to stick out like a sore thumb. It's not like a the styles where you might be able to get away with something being a little bit less accurate. If you're trying to draw your reference photo realistically, then you've got to stick quite close to the reference image and really study it. You've got to spend that extra time getting things really precise. This next reality of realistic drawing is one of the most important ones to understand and to not ignore. The key to getting a more realistic drawing is actually to spend more time planning out your drawing. For this drawing, I spent a while seeing where the light was hitting the hand and where it was creating shadows so that when I started shading, I would know which areas to keep light and which areas to make darker to create more depth. For this drawing here, I really studied the different textures that I could see in the snail. I really broke down how I was going to simulate each of these textures by thinking about which drawing tools that I would use and which drawing techniques I would use as well. Planning all of this out before I even picked up a pencil meant that when I actually started drawing, I made less mistakes and the drawing process just went so much smoother, it was less frustrating and I got a more realistic result. All of these drawings are from my comprehensive course drawing decoded in the course I show you how I plan out all of my drawings all of the techniques you need to know like blending and erasing as well as all of the fundamental skills you need for realistic drawings so that by the end of the course you can create really realistic drawings like these if you're interested in joining the course when it opens up again I'll leave a link in the description where you can join the wait list so you can be notified when the course next opens one thing that as a realistic artist you are more prone to is perfectionism because when you're doing realistic drawing you are trying to get things accurate so there's that natural tendency to be a bit of a perfectionist want things to look flawless what I found is that a lot of artists when they're perfectionists they will work on a drawing and they just won't know when to put it down there's always something to tweak always something to change and that can stop you moving on to next projects where you can learn new things and get better and we're also less likely to take risks try new things and make mistakes because we're scared of failure and perfectionism is also a problem if you're always thinking negative things about yourself while you're drawing so every time a negative thought enters your head I want you to think of something that you are doing really well with your drawing a bit of perfectionism can be good it can push us to do even better but you've got to know your limit of when it is stopping you from reaching your full potential these are realities that over the years I have learned to accept and embrace but there's also some other big lessons that I have learned from doing drawings for over a decade so check this video out next where I go through the three big lessons I learned from doing over 300 drawings. Check it out and I'll see you there.